What's up, world? My name is Trayvon Holly. Uh, I decided to hop on here and just tell a testimony, basically. Like, you know, so it started off yesterday. I was just chilling with my nephew. You know, we was playing the game. My nephew lo loves chilling with his uncle. You know what I'm saying? As I smack him around in Madden. It's like, uh, but yeah, you know, I was just smacking him around. And uh, for some reason, man, I just, I've been, I've been in heavy prayer. You know, I've just been really seeking the Lord. You know, I know that I'm forgiven. However, like, I just, I don't want to really see myself anymore so i just been wanting to see who jesus wants me to be like i'm tired of being in a way you know what i'm saying i'm tired of feeling like i'm tired i'm tired of feeling like i need to run from god and he's telling me to run towards him you know today I, well i was up all night first of all to like 2 a.m in the morning 2, 3 a.m. in the morning, and I was just looking for churches because I felt the Lord convicted me to go to church. And I'm like, bro, like, I'm not a church guy. Like, I believe in you, Lord, but I'm not a church guy. You know, and the Lord just kept pressing it on me, go to church, go to church. And I just felt it so bad, like this urge to be in the presence of God, like uh, an environment of God. And so I said, you know, all right, I'm going to do it. I don't know where I'm going to go, Lord, but I ask you to lead me. So I opened, this, I opened my phone, started searching up churches in the area that was near me. And I found this church in Dundalk called, uh, what do you call it? It's called Ep Edemic? Was it Epic? Epic. I think it's called Epic. And that church, man, was so beautiful. I mean, I was embraced when I first walked through the door, yo. Like, I, all in me, like, I just had heard my inner thoughts screaming at me. Like, nah, this is too much. They're going to judge you. Bro, look at you. You're underdressed. Blah, blah, blah. People were coming in there with shorts, bro. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I felt loved, you know what I mean? I felt embraced and I felt like I was a part of it and people wanted to talk to me. And even though there was a lot of people in there, it's, it's like people still wanted to talk to me. So I just, I felt really loved and not judged. And the pastor really hit on a lot of things like about not condemning yourself and how people, how we tend to run from God when we have a lot of issues. Like, okay, I'll deal with this. Like, this isn't a major issue this is you know this is just who i am and the sermon really today that from what i took from it was denying self denying who you are as a person like you know we live in a society and this is the pastor said like we live in a society where as though everybody's like you know whatever makes you happy do it you know it's not hurting anybody else but the truth of the matter is it is hurting you it's turning you away from god it's hurting you it's it's it's, it's not something that you, sh you just know you it's not something you should be doing and he said it way better than how i can try to explain it but i understood the message that we shouldn't be we shouldn't be selfish we shouldn't just be focusing on our jobs and the one thing that he said yo that blew my mind was he was quoting from a book and he was saying how there's nothing wrong like it's, it's like he went through a list he said there's nothing wrong with loving with loving your job as long as you don't love your job more than you love your kids there's nothing wrong with loving your kids as long as you don't love your kids more than you love your wife there's nothing wrong with loving your wife more uh as, as long as you don't love your wife more than you love god and yo <laughs> i sat back and i was mind blown it's it's nothing wrong with loving these people these things as long as your priority is set in order and, and I sat back and I was just like, yo, that's dope. You know what I mean? Like the way he broke that down, I understood it. And it really, like really, it, it penetrated my soul, yo. Like it really made sense to me. And then he was saying stuff about how, it was like he was talking directly to me, like don't run from God when you're feeling like pain or you're suffering mentally, whatever it is, like run towards God. Like a lot of us, you know, basically, all right, this is, this is just who I am. This is just me. But God wants us to deny self and he wants us to be who he wants us to be and not to be selfish. And um, I always knew that, but it was the way he broke it down that just made a lot more sense. You feel me? I became more humble after the situation that I went through um, these past six months and going through this divorce process. Like I am suffering, yes, mentally and emotionally. However, uh, the Lord has been calling me into deep prayer and into, you know, my secret place and to go to church. And so I've been just pushing myself there because I'm tired of myself, you know. Um, yeah.
And that message today was just dope and I needed it. And even though everybody else was like judging me or I felt judged by other people, like these people didn't see that, you know what I mean? And they just kept saying things like, no matter what you did, like God loves you and God, God sees you, you know, for who you are, not the sin. And basically also telling you to hold yourself accountable. And he was hitting on stuff about my relationship that just nobody else would know. And I don't know if he knew that he was doing that, but he was the pastor. You know, he was hitting on a lot of things that I was battling with mentally. Um, I, co I, of course, miss my family, my sons, my wife. But I know that I have to move on. I have to move forward with my life. I can't wait around and be crying and moping. I've been forgiven. Now, with that forgiveness, what do you do with it? How, what have you learned? How can you apply it? And um, that's what I'm doing. I'm applying it and I'm following the Lord, silencing my flesh. Like right now, I feel sad. I feel lonely, but then I feel the presence of God too. So I'll be all right, you know what I mean? Just take it one day at a time and keep seeking the Lord and know that I'm forgiven and that there's no condemnation in Christ. Like he just kept, the pastor just kept saying things like, I bet that when you came in today, you just kept feeling this, this what if they judge me? What if all of these people are looking at me, blah, 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 you know? And he was like, that wasn't the case, was it? And he was talking to a crowd of people, but I felt like he was talking to me. And um, he said for the past two days, he felt um, that message, the sermon that he had, really weigh on him but the crazy part is i don't even think he knew he was talking talking to me like they asked for prayer people to come up in prayer you know and give their life to the lord and things like that and um only one person went up and i knew i was supposed to be that second person but i don't really like all that attention so i didn't go up but i, I submitted to the lord right there and he and he hit me you know he shook my spirit and i definitely surrendered right there again and uh, been thinking about getting rebaptized lately, just to rededicate my life. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I don't. I know that you're supposed to only get one baptism. They say you die one time, you know. But it's a symbolism, you know. So I don't know. It's just something I was thinking about for real. But other than that, man, I just felt embraced today. I didn't feel judged. Um, and I just, I, I do plan on. Um, also, I see people on my page keep saying, "Yo, make Christian music," and I, and I will. You know what I'm saying it's just the timing. Uh, I will make some dope Christian music eventually again. Um, I think that's the Lord's will still for me. But I guess going forward with the music, I'll be kind of looking at it different. But I do plan on making some more Christian music and it's going to be fire. Like it's going to be different. You know. So yeah, yo, I ain't got much to say now. So I'm going to go in and hop off here. And I'll uh, see you guys next time.